Hello, my name is Kiriath, and today we're going to have a little chat about these lads, Dawnbreaker Cohorts, which are the vanguard of the Blood Angels' legendary assaults, allegedly. It's not really alleged, it's just that's exactly what it says, so that's true. But, I really like these things. They look pretty good. There's a few things specifically that I've, I really think have been doing quite well with these lads. And, uh, yeah, let's let's take a bit of a closer look. Let's get a, a nice rotating look on the Forge World, on the Forge World site. Now, there's a few things that I really like about these. For a start, the armour. The armour is, for me, that nice compromise of being recognisably more fancy, recognisably more more decorative, more uh, more ornamented, but not clustered or overdone. It's not like every square inch of the armour is covered in stuff. There is a, a very real risk with stuff like that that it can look a bit busy, and we've had a few releases, uh, not just not just 40k, but 30k as well, where there's just a little bit too much going on, and it's felt it's felt cluttered rather than like rather than looking kind of beautifully ornamented. It's kind of looked like things have been slapped on a bit. I don't get that from this this squad. This feels like a li and like a nice mix of of stuff that is recognisably Blood Angels and and recognisably different to just a standard uh, a standard Space Marine, but it's not massively over the top. Similar thing with the helmets. Actually, I do quite like the helmets. I've seen a few people say they're not keen, but I don't know whether it's the colour scheme that's doing a lot for them in this particular image, but the helmets do look kind of nice as well. I have to admit, I'm not a big fan of wrist-mounted guns. That's just, that's a me thing. Um, I can see why they've got them in this case. Uh, a similar thing with uh, with Grey Knights. It, it's it's less a thing of, look how cool this looks, and more, well, you want a full-size gun, but you also want to carry a spear that you can use with two hands. Something's got to give, and usually it results in the gun being mounted to the wrist, leaving them free to wield the spear with both hands, which, I mean, makes makes sense. I've just never been a fan of the look of the wrist-mounted gun, which does... I'm not going to say spoils this unit for me, because it doesn't, but it's not something that I personally like all that much. I kind of much prefer the Custodes approach, if anything, just having the gun attached to the, the weapon itself, but then that's kind of their thing, isn't it? So using that on everything would kind of take away how special that is. One thing I will say I'm really not a fan of is the cloth between the legs on these models. I feel like in some of them, it properly messes up the posing for a few. And there's also the fact that it's pretty damn long. I mean, if you look at this guy here, who's almost doing like a sanguineous type thing with his legs, which he spears down, not up, but that cloth that is hanging down from his belt is absurdly long. It feels like... You take two steps forward wearing that, and you are very likely to either just rip it off immediately, or fall flat on your shiny golden face, which, it's not it's not the most graceful mental image, and I don't, I guess I just don't really see what it adds. I think, to be fair, if it was shorter, it might look a bit better. I actually quite like, I don't know, I never know what to call it, because it's not a tabard, I know that, because the tabard is the thing that goes like, it's over you... Over your head, down your front and down your back, but there's no sleeves or sides, if I remember correctly. Um, and that's not what this is. This is like a... It's, a, it's not even a loincloth, that's a different thing entirely, but... Whilst I quite like that when it's a reasonable length, these aren't a reasonable length, and it feels a bit weird. And I'd say that the, the motion of it, like the way it's been sculpted, like that one especially, is kind of down straight but then curling for some reason it's not massively impacted by the leg off to the side so it it looks a little odd it doesn't look natural which doesn't do a huge amount for the posing now some of them it's not too bad um but yeah i that one actually makes the most sense until we get to the side angle where suddenly suddenly it kind of bulges out by his feet, the guy with the spear raised up above his head. It kind of works to show that, that movement until a certain point where it just stops being affected by, like, I don't know, gravity, the wind passing over it. It's it's a strange decision, and I'm not sure it's one that I particularly like. 
The posing on these overall, I think, is not too bad. I especially do like the guy with the spear raised over his head. I mean, it looks like he's either about to chuck it at someone or give someone a real good stabbing. So that's quite a nice pose. Some of them felt a bit static to me to start with until I actually took a proper look at the the jump packs on these guys. And the jump packs is actually the thing that I like the most out of this unit. Uh, by far, I think it's... There's a really nice design to the jump packs because they have something that the standard jump pack that we're used to doesn't have, which is, at the very least, the illusion of control. Now, whether the kind of adjustable surfaces there on the jump packs would do a sufficient job at directing the uh, the power from these things and allow you to actually fly as opposed to just hurl yourself forward at great speed um, or up and forward at great speed uh, I don't know but it looks like they could and it makes some of the poses make more sense because it looks like they'd be capable of more stable flight now when you look at a standard uh, a standard jump pack the, the like of which we you know we see on pretty much everything 40k wise space marine wise I mean that very much feels like something where you guess roughly where you're going to land you push the button and you go there very quickly and with very little chance to actually do much about it. It's not it's not a it's not something by which you have a huge amount of control, it looks like. To me, anyway. That's always been my feeling on it. I have to admit playing uh, playing the uh, Space Marine video game did nothing to to change how I felt that jump packs really don't look like they'd work very well. Fun game, the jump pack was fun, but God, it was awkward to use, which, looking at it, in fairness, I imagine it would be anyway. Compare that to that, and suddenly you've got all these, what look like, methods for actually controlling your flight, for making sure that you are going in the right direction, or maybe even hovering a bit and being able to change change path mid-flight without having to kind of turn your entire everything, aim vaguely at a point off to your left, and fire it again and hope that actually, yes, you do hit that rough area. This feels more precise than that. And of course, being Space Marines, an all jump pack is as precise as they want it to be, pretty much. they It's not like they just have to go off on a wing and a prayer. They don't actually have any wings to go with. They've, they've just got the prayer, mostly. But it never looked all that reliable. This does look more reliable. Now, whether it would be or not is kind of irrelevant, to be fair. Uh, this is one of those things whereby there's a lot of stuff in 40k that looks really cool and is absolutely worthless. Chainswords being the prime example. Terrible weapon, but everyone loves them because they're chainswords. And chain uh, it's a chainsaw and a sword at the same time. How can you not think that's quality? It clearly is. Also, not going to be all that functional. Much like things like jump packs, where there doesn't seem to be any... <laughs> recognisable means by which to steer in any capacity. doesn't matter. It's still cool, it's still fun, and it's still a core part of, of Space Marines as a whole. These just feel like an evolution of that, which is weird because they are, of course, 30k, not 40k. So this is stuff that is before, but it looks really good. And I feel like it adds... I feel like the fact that there is that extra... That extra detail on these, there is, there are those like, those like control surfaces and stuff. It it makes a lot of the poses for me a lot more, maybe not more dynamic, but at least more reasonable, at least more, more realistic. I guess. I mean, you know, the idea of it being more realistic when we're talking jump pack infantry equipped with spears and wrist mounted guns is a little bit laughable. But every little helps, you know? Overall, I think this is a really decent looking unit. I really do. I think they've got a nice a nice solid balance between between like decorative and and functional. There's admittedly the questionable choice of that cloth between the legs, which I, I think is the one the one thing that I just I'm not a big fan of. It is fixable. You could just <laughs> if you were so inclined. Uh, do a bit of uh, cutting and filing and, you know, cut them down to size. But apart from those, I really like these guys. They look pretty damn solid. And if you wanted something, you know, a little bit alternative for, 
for certain Blood Angels units, you could you could quite easily get away with it, and they would not look out of place because they they do have that nice that nice proper fancy, but still pretty deadly Blood Angels feel, which is I think the, one of the things that makes this lot look look as good as they do. So yeah, that is the uh, the Dawnbreaker cohorts, which as I say, I think look pretty damn good. Let me know what you think of these lads in the comments down below. Do you like the design? Dislike the design? What do you reckon of the jump pack? Do you think it looks a bit more reasonable, or do you think the you know the, the classic, the classic what we've been used to for so long is still fine? Let me know what you think in the comments. Feel free to click all the things, uh, Patreon, video, subscribe, all that stuff. Click it if you like. Don't click if you don't want to. And as always, there's an affiliate link in the description for Element Games, which if you buy something from there, I get something for sending you that way. 10% of anything you spend at the end of the month goes to charity, and it's way cheaper, way, way cheaper. And they've got stuff for literally every system known to man. So you can do that if you would like. I leave it in your capable hands. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Toodaloo.